coming up on Hands on iOS, I am excited to show you the incredible, the amazing, and the already built-in note-taking app known as Notes for iOS. Hands on iOS is brought to you from Twit's LastPass Studios. You're focused on security, but are your employees? Well, LastPass can ensure that they are by making access and authentication seamless, whether employees are working in the office or remotely. Visit lastpass.com slash twit to learn more. This is Twit. This episode of Hands on iOS is brought to you by Taylor Store. Get 20% off plus free shipping with every purchase through October 31st at taylorstore.com slash twit and use code twit. Welcome back to another episode of Hands on iOS. I am excited to tell you about the Notes app for iOS because it is a powerful and quite in-depth piece of software that already exists on your iPhone. And you may find that you don't need a third-party app if you know everything that you need to know about Notes already on your device. So let's take a look. So first things first, we're going to find the Notes app and launch it. And you can see that it opens to one of the first things that I want to talk about, folders. The organization features on Notes have only gotten better over time, and that includes the ability to organize your notes in folders. You can see that it shows iCloud here. That means that that is where those notes files and folders are stored. If I choose new folder, I can give it a name. So let's call it hands on iOS, whoops, save. And now there is a, another folder in my iCloud section. Uh, choosing edit at the top lets me organize the folders as I need to. And you can see that I can tap that, my favorite button, it's the more button, tap the more button. And I can add people to this folder, meaning that other people with iCloud accounts can access this folder and access the files and folders on it. I can move the folder to some other place. I can rename it or I can delete it. I'm gonna click cancel because I don't wanna do any of that and choose done at the top. I'll launch into the hands on iOS folder and immediately see there are no notes because we haven't created any yet. But before we go anywhere, I bet you can guess what I'm going to do next. That's right. I'm going to tap that more button in the top right corner. As soon as we do that, you can see again that you've got add people to add people from iCloud to be able to access your folder from wherever they are. It's a lot like Dropbox or one of the other cloud storage services. You can move the folder somewhere else, rename it, or view attachments, meaning the files in this folder, like images and PDFs and things like that. I'll choose cancel, and down in the bottom right corner, that's how you create a new note. Chances are, if you've opened the Notes app, you probably know that at least, but we'll go ahead and tap that button to start a new note. Again, up in the top right corner, you see the plus person button. That means add person. And again, it is for adding a person via iCloud. It is currently grayed out. We've got to create a note that has something in it. Uh, the share sheet button is right next to it, which lets you share uh, the text from this note or actually share the note itself. And of course, done, which lets you sort of pop out of the note. So what do we got working down here at the bottom? You may have noticed that above the keyboard, and above the suggestions area are a set of buttons that end in an X. The X simply lets you close out of this shortcuts area, but each of these buttons are formatting and choice buttons. So you kind of get to uh, change the formatting of the note, but also if you want to add certain things. So I'll start in the uh, top left here. You can see that it kind of looks like a little table and that's because that's what it is. If I tap on that button, you can see that a table pops up in the start of the note, and what appears but my favorite button, it is the more button. So I'm gonna tap on that, and you can see that you can copy the table, you can share the table itself, you can convert the table to text, which is very handy, or delete the table. I'm gonna choose cancel, and now we're going to tap on the the uh, little dot options in the actual table. So in the top left corner, there's the three dots. If I tap on that, I can choose to add a row or delete a row. I can drag these little uh, yellow circles here. And what these do is allow me to choose a portion of the table. So right now I just have this row selected. If I tap and hold down on that, then it selects both areas. I can tap again on the left to choose to add a row. 
Now, if that's how the one on the left works, you can probably imagine how the one on the top works. It is a column button, so I can add another column. So let's say uh, show number, show date, show idea. Those are my three categories that I want on my table and I can embolden them if I need to. I can italicize, I can underline, or I can strike through. I think we're gonna choose bold and underline because we're getting fancy here. And now in these uh, corresponding cells, I can start to choose show numbers. Now look at what's happening in the keyboard. In the bottom, left, bottom right corner, you can see there's a next button. Normally that's a return button, but right now it says next. If we tap on that, you can see that it goes to the next column. Uh, so we would put in here, let's say, oh, seven, 20, 20. And next um, show is gonna be about eggs. What happens if I tap next now? It creates a new row. So you can very quickly, even though you're working on a small device, go through and make adjustments to the table as you need. So we'd call this show two. Uh, let's say it happens on 07, 27, 20, and this show is about cheese. You get the idea. I can add rows as I need to, remove rows or columns as I need to, all from right there. If I tap somewhere in the note that's outside of that table, then I'm outside of the table and I can do other things. Uh, tapping back into the table lets me hop into it, and again, in the bottom left corner, if I hit that button, I can copy that table, I can share that table alone, or I can convert that table to text. What's next? Well, this is the formatting button. Anytime you see a capital A and a lowercase a on iOS, chances are you are looking at a formatting button. If I hit this button, you can see that right now it is automatically decided that what needs to be, uh, the way that it needs to be formatted is body text, but I can change that as I need. There's title, there's a heading, there's a subheading, body text, and monospaced text, which is most often used when you are showing code on the screen. So what I'm going to do is take my cursor and move it up above the current category. I can do that by holding down my thumb on the space bar and then waiting for a little tick from the uh, Taptic Engine and scooting the cursor up, then I'm going to tap Return to bring that table down. I will hold on the space bar again, go up, oh, maybe, go up above the table. It seems to be wanting to select the text instead of going above it, so instead, I'll just tap above it. And I can call this um, H-O-I Show info. Now I'm going to choose that formatting button. I will choose title. And now I have a document as we want it. I could italicize this text. I could make it bold and italicized. I could underline it. I could strike through it. And then let's go ahead and move into the document just so you can see that I can start to create little lists. I can do unordered lists with both hyphens and bullets, or I can do ordered lists with numbers. So let's say one is yellow, two is green, three is red, four is blue, and this goes even farther. If I go into yellow, I tap return, and then I choose the formatting button again. The buttons on the bottom right side of this formatting section are for indentation. So when I hit that, you can see that it scoots in. And what did it do? It also changed the way that the list is ordered. Then I could do yellow, green, uh, what, chartreuse. Let's see if I can spell that word. Yeah, there we go, chartreuse, etc. I'll delete out of that one and pop back into this uh, area. So I have easily created an ordered list. I can choose just by tapping on one of these areas to add uh, formatting like bold, italics, and underline. I can choose to indent from there so I don't actually have to go down into that formatting tab. And I can select this text and choose to share just that portion if I want to. 
This episode of Hands on iOS is brought to you by the awesome, the amazing Taylor Store. Taylor Store lets you customize high quality made to order clothing. Its Size Me app revolutionizes the measurement process. It lets you customize dress shirts, chinos, suits, polo shirts, and shorts. Pick your fabric, your thread color, your buttons, your embroidery. So, so, so much to customize. If something doesn't fit, donate it to charity, and Taylor Store will send you a new item. Their customer service team is impeccable. Get 20% off plus free shipping with every purchase through October 31st at taylorstore.com slash twit and use the code twit. That's taylorstore.com slash twit, code twit. Terms and conditions apply. When I hit the plus button, I'm going to bring this back up because I want to talk about one of my favorite features. And in fact, let's go ahead and tap done to move out of this document. We'll go back a page, hands on iOS, folders. We're back in iCloud. And now I'm going to choose new maybe. And then I am going to call this shopping list. Now, because my cursor is at the top of the note, you'll see that notes makes the decision of creating a title for you. So if you tapped on formatting here, you would see that title is selected as the format. I'll hit return. And now I'm going to tap on the checkbox button. This is one of my favorites. It's perfect for creating a shopping list. When I hit that button, it creates a checkbox. So what do I want to get? Eggs, cheese, milk, bread, dog food, oranges, apples, bananas, etc. I can tap, oops, done. Or hitting, you just saw that I hit the dual return button by hitting it once and then hitting it again, you tell the app, hey, I'm done with whatever list I am creating. I'll tap done. And now when I tap with my finger onto any of those, it will mark it as done. If this is your first time creating a check list, then this awesome setting pops up. It's called enable sorting. When you do this, it moves the items that have been checked off down to the bottom to get them out of your way. So I'm gonna to choose to enable automatic sorting and you'll see that eggs moves down to the bottom, cheese moves down to the bottom, milk moves down to the bottom, bread, dog food, oranges. I'm the fastest shopper in the world and I'm done. Awesome. Now, let's go back to that HOI show info note so that we can continue along. The next option here is a camera button. And as you might imagine, it lets you choose photos from your photo library, take photos or videos that you can insert right in there. Yes, videos even, or scan documents. So if you have a handwritten document, then you could put that onto the uh, into the document. And it does it in a way that instead of taking the document and and just posting a photo, it actually understands that you are trying to scan in a document and therefore does a better job of properly recognizing text and making it available there. So that's what scan documents would do. It pop open the camera and lets you scan a document. Take photo or video will take a photo or video. And then the last one, photo library, lets you choose from the photo library. I'll choose take photo or video really quick just so you can see how this works pops open the camera and my, oh my, that's a dusty screen I need to clean off, but I will hit that photo button. I'll choose use photo cause I'm good with it. And it just pops it right in. If I select it, it becomes full screen and I can uh, swipe to get out of it or move around it. So simply selecting on it lets it uh, take up the entire screen. Now I'll tap done in the top left to sort of put it back where it belongs and we will move along to the next one. And this is another fun one. This lets you write with your finger, or if you're on an iPad, using an Apple Pencil, and I can choose all sorts of things. If I tap on the black pencil here on the left, I can change the stroke weight to make it thicker or thinner, and the opacity by dragging to the left or to the right, and if I tap out of that, I can choose on the far right here, the color wheel to change to a different color. Now I've got a pencil selected and I've got a blue color and I can draw here on my notes. And you might see there's a little uh, yellow circle with a line running from it. What that says is, hey, pal, this is the portion at which you can start drawing and sketching. So I'm going to choose undo. 
and I'm going to choose done so that I can kind of scoot down a little bit. And so we move down and that way you can kind of see uh, that this is the portion that you'd want. And again, if I was on an iPad with an Apple Pencil, this would be much easier. But I just wanted to show that you are able to do this straight from your phone. And so I could put, um, let's see, I guess I've got to select the tool again. Hey, there, not my best work, but it is pressure sensitive. So as my finger gets presses harder on the screen, the line gets thicker or thinner. And now this becomes a portion of text there on the screen. Uh, if I tap on that little icon again, you can see there's a highlighter, there's a sort of colored pencil, there's an eraser, uh, this little circular or spiral tool lets you select portions and then move them around. A ruler, which you can put on the screen, and you can actually see that I'm dragging my fingers around. And as I do that, I can actually make a nice diagonal at a certain angle. And then when I use my pen along this area, it will actually draw it at that angle. Very cool if you are doing any sort of measurement stuff, uh, if you are trying to take notes for uh, adding a new uh, shelf to your home or need to take measurements for a project that you're working on and it has angles involved, then now I can create that very easily and you can see that we've created a nice little angle there in the bottom right corner. And as I said, the last one is just a place for you to choose the text. I'll go ahead and uh, tap done to pop out of that. And what I want to show you now, because it seems as if we have selected all of the buttons that are possible, uh, in the bottom right corner is just the new note button, and in the bottom left corner is the delete note button. But I wanna show one more thing, and that is when you have a photo, you can tap on that photo, and what do we see in that top right? That is the markup button, just as you remember from the bottom. And if I tap on the markup button, maybe if I tap on the markup button, there we go. Then it will actually allow me to mark up this document. So I could highlight uh, the VU meters and the recorder. I could uh, make a note on here about the dust. And you can see I'm using the pencil tool. And so that one is kind of hard to see uh, because my hand has to press very hard to make it thicker. So I'll choose the pen tool and I will choose white. And then I can say dust. What a mess, as you can see. Uh, there's one more button that you may not have noticed. It's the plus button. When I tap on the plus button, I can choose special uh, markup options. And that includes text, a signature, a magnifier, a square, a circle, a, uh, a speech icon, and an arrow. So maybe I wanna choose the arrow and dragging on these control points lets me change the size of the arrow. So I will stretch it out. I will choose recorder there. And the green control point in the middle lets you change how it bends. In the bottom, you can change the color. Uh, including on the far right there, a way to change colors other than the ones that are available via basic selection or default selection. And in the bottom left, there are options for the shape. You can make a an arrow that has two arrows. You can just make a line or you can make a normal arrow. And going from left to right is thin, medium, and thick in terms of the stroke weight of that arrow. So we'll choose to put that on a speck of dust as I shame myself. And now I'm going to add a magnifier. This is one of my favorite tools. It lets you, as I move this around, you can see that it magnifies the text on the screen in those areas. So when I am showing someone how to use a tool on iOS, I'll often take a screenshot of my screen and then use the magnifier tool to make a, to, to point to a specific area. The blue, uh, control point once again allows you to change the scale of the, uh, in this case, the the m the magnifying shape or call out shape. And in the top, the green control point, by moving it to the left or right along the circle, will change the magnification level. 
So I'm going to zoom it out a little bit so you can kind of see the whole thing or zoom it in so it's very, very close. And then once again, in the bottom left-hand corner, I can change how thick the uh, stroke on the outside is or thin based on how I'd like it and change the color of that stroke. And then I will choose a plus just so you can see, last but not least, the signature option. So if I tap that signature option, it lets you then sign your name. That is not at all my signature, but we're gonna go with that. I'll tap done. And now my signature is added to the document. I'll choose done. And look, it saves all the changes we made to that photo. The, uh, the horrible text is still there and it is all available. Then tapping in the top right to open the share sheet lets me, if I wanted to airdrop this document or message this document, add people to the document, which again is a way to uh, share this document online. I can find actual text within the note. I can make adjustments to the lines and grids of the note and print it out if I'd like to. What I love too about this, um, this feature is that as you create sketches and drawings and made, make photos, you can actually, by hitting the share sheet, save those independently to your photos library. So you can see it says save to images. You might be wondering, what's the other image? It's this hey there text. That's the other image. If I go back, I've got those documents saved and anywhere I'm logged in with iCloud, it is synced to those places. So now that you know about how to use the Notes app itself, let's take a look in the settings menu. I'll head into settings and I will go until I find notes. Choose notes from the menu and let's talk about how this works. Up first is a permission that lets Siri and search actually find stuff within your notes. So if you ask Siri to find a note, then it can do that for you, but also it lets you uh, be able to search for things within the notes themselves. You can choose a default account. So in this case, I've only got one account that's saving notes. So it's the iCloud account. You can create a password and lock certain notes. And I'll talk about that in a moment because that actually happens back in the notes app, but it is a feature that you can sort of set a, a password up for here. You can create an on my iPhone account and that is one that then would not be synced across. So if you want notes to just exist on your device itself and you don't want those to sync to your Mac, to your iPad, whatever other devices you might have logged in, choose to create an on my iPhone account and make sure that you create the note then in the on my iPhone account. Now viewing, this lets you sort the notes by the last time you edited them or when they were first created or by the title. So if you are an alphabetical thinker, that's how you can do that. Or if you don't want it to update every time you make an adjustment to the notes, but would rather have the notes stay where it is and just be when the note was created, you can set it that way. New notes start with, this is what I was talking about before, where notes automatically decided that a title should be the first bit of formatting. You can change that to heading or subheading or body. Uh, you can this is the sort checked items feature. So if you are one of those folks who may have created a checked items list and you're not getting that prompt and you're wondering how to make an adjustment to that, or if you turn it on and you don't like it, you choose this sort checked items. You can choose manually instead. And then last but not least in this section is the lines and grids functionality that I showed you in the share sheet. When I tap on this, this lets you choose how you want notes to be set up. You can have it be blank, you can have it actually include lines. You can have all sorts of lines here, including a grid of uh, different types. So a super, super small grid or a bigger grid or an even bigger grid. All of these options are available to you and it will just create these as the background of your notes document. So it makes it easier if you are handwriting or if you are trying to sketch and draw for measurements and things like that. Now, as I mentioned, it will create each of the, the handwriting bits that you've added and the photos that you've added as separate images. And in order to save those, you choose the share sheet and then save two images, four images, whatever it happens to be. But you can choose to have this happen automatically. So anytime you make photos or videos within the Notes app, if you want them to save to your photos library automatically, you just toggle this option on. 
And then last but not least is the access notes from lock screen button. So what this does is it lets you use the shortcut in control center to access notes from the lock screen. So if I swipe down from the top right to get to control center, right now I don't have a notes button here, but I could add that, check out my video for control center to learn how to do that. And then I would be able to access those notes. On an iPad, that feature is actually more in depth because you can say that if I were to tap on my, on my iPad with my Apple Pencil while the device is locked, go ahead and create a new note. So it's a little bit more in depth in that way. Uh, so let's head back to the Notes app so that I can show you how to create a locked document. So if I tap on shopping list, and for some reason you decide, hey, I'm not judging that you don't want your shopping list seen by anyone else. We hit that share sheet in the top right corner. We choose lock note, and then we can set up a password for it. So I don't know, we'll come up with a password. And you saw that I can actually use, or you can actually use face ID to lock or unlock this document. So once you've added a lock to the document, simply tapping on the lock, locks it, and if I choose view note, it face IDs, says, oh, that's you, unlocks the document, or you can type in the password if you like it that way. Now, if you, like me, use the Notes app a lot, then you probably are going to have a long, long list of notes, and maybe instead of creating shopping lists every time you go to the grocery store, you just wanna use one notes document as your shopping list document, or maybe you have a, a note that you regularly update and you don't want it to uh, be buried under all the other notes that you have. Well, this is the last and in my opinion, one of the most important features that you should know about and that is pinned notes. By swiping, by holding down your finger and swiping to the right, you can see that there's a little pin icon and I can choose by swiping over far enough, there's a sort of a little tap that happens as I swipe that over and you see how the pin moves. As soon as that happens, this item becomes pinned at the top and no matter how many notes you pop into the bottom there, those ones, that one, whatever you have in the pin section will always stay in the pinned section. And then I'm gonna go ahead and lock that note that I don't want anybody seeing that shopping list note. Folks, that is your in-depth look at the Notes app. I hope that if you had peeked into the Notes app before uh, and maybe didn't, you know, sort of dig in, now you understand just how powerful it is. Apple is constantly adding new features to the Notes app to kind of make it stand out among the competition of some of those third-party apps that are available. Uh, let me know your thoughts, though, on the Notes app. Are you a a regular Notes app user? Do you hate the Notes app? What's your favorite Note app? I want to know it all. And of course, send your questions, your thoughts, your ideas, etc. to handsonios at twit.tv. Uh, if you want to make sure that you get this show the moment it's available, then do subscribe. You can head to twit.tv slash hoi, where we've got links to subscribe to the show in all of its formats. That's Spotify, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, everything you can think of. It's all there. And on YouTube, youtube.com slash hands on iOS. Be sure to hit that subscribe button, hit the like button. And if you want to know right when the episodes go up on YouTube, then of course, you've got to ring the bell. Thank you again for tuning in. And we will catch you next time on Hands on iOS. Be sure to check out the other shows on the network, like my other show, Hands On Wellness. I love to share different tips and tricks that's going to help you get a better grasp on your personal wellness. Just go to twit.tv slash how and subscribe now.